Are you feeling completely stuck in the cycle of binge eating and is the shame and guilt just completely taking over your life? And do you desperately wish that you had a solution to finally overcome this cycle that you can't seem to break free of? I know the feeling. Been there before, and in this video, I'm gonna share exactly how I overcame binge eating and this 20 year habit that I couldn't break free of no matter what I did. So be sure to stay all the way to the end so you can soak in all the juicy details. If you are looking for even more proven tips and resources on how to overcome the battle with your body, the insecurity, your unhealthy relationship with food and find the peace, freedom, and confidence that you're looking for, subscribe to my channel and you will be notified every week when I post a new video. And be sure to hit that little bell too, super handy. Okay, let's get into it. So how did I specifically overcome my binge eating habit? Well, I think we should go back a little bit so I can give you some more understanding of the journey that I went through and hopefully you'll relate as well. And it will give you even more motivation to try these same tools. Okay, so I struggled my whole life going back to high school with my body. I grew up in a household where my mom actually had a really unhealthy relationship with her body and her body image. And she is a gorgeous, stunning woman in all ways, but she never really felt enough in her body image. And that really translated to me. And no, it's not her fault, but I just wanna help illustrate that if you grew up in a household where you had a parent or a family member that was, or an aunt or a cousin that was really struggling with their body image, our brains seek to find familiarity and so they seek to gain this information and just show you that this is how you're supposed to lead your lead your life it's actually super unsafe as a human being in the world if you're growing up with a parent or someone in your life that has a, a poor experience with their body image for your brain to go against that because that means you're going against your family and there's this whole thing in our psyche that prevents us from actually stepping outside of the family norm. So number one, it's not your fault that you inherited some of these struggles. I, my whole life from high school really struggled with my body image. And no matter what I did, it felt like I would blame everything that was going wrong in the world of my life on my body. It would be like, if only my body were smaller, I would be placed in the front of the class in my competitive dance school. Or if only my body were a bit thinner, then maybe my partner would love me more, or I'd have the right boyfriend, or I'd be happier, or these clothes would look better, or I'd be more popular in school, or whatever, whatever the end of that sentence is for you. So I started my life with this foundation of being pretty rocky and unhealthy with my body image, and I started to restrict my food a lot. And that obviously led me into a really unhealthy path. Fortunately for me, I was able to break free of that pattern of restricting food and struggling with anorexia quite quickly because I realized how severe the issue was. It got to the point where, you know, I was completely like things like I couldn't control my body temperature. I like I remember quite literally just being super vulnerable here. Like I remember being in high school and having to bring a second change of clothes because I had zero control over my body that I would actually, I was so frail and so thin and so out of control of my body that I would actually wet myself and I would have to go find, go to the change room and change my pants and hope that no one noticed. Like I had zero control over my body. So I realized that this whole ploy of trying to change my body to be more popular or be more happy or whatever the end of that sentence was, was not working. And it was leading me further and further into destruction and isolation and shame. And so what happened was because of this whole period of agonizing restriction, my body said, this isn't working for me anymore. And now that you're deciding to eat again, I'm gonna make sure that you eat so much because I want you to really take back what you lost. So I found myself in these odd patterns of eating at night and eating food. Like I can't even tell you the amounts of food that I could take down was, was impressive and shocking. Like I would sit in the dark in my kitchen. I would spread peanut butter on uh, bread and I would lather that on so thick and I would eat, no joke, eight in a row, full sandwiches of peanut butter and jelly. And I didn't want anyone to see me and I just continued this pattern of hiding my food. So this was a clear indication that my body was trying to come back from that binge eating, from the constant restriction. 
So actually, when I went back, when I went to university after this, so this period of binge eating started, and then I went to university where, you know, if you've been to university or college, wherever you are, likely you were in that same mentality of whatever, anything goes, let's just be wild, let's have fun, let's drink, let's eat pizza. And I truly, I ate whatever I wanted. I ate pizza, pasta, drank a lot. You know, I went to Wendy's and fast food restaurants at two in the morning after the bar and I didn't really gain any weight. Like my body was just like, okay, cool. Like this is normal. And uh, everything just kind of carried on from there. But what happened was later on in my life back, I came back to the same patterns of getting sucked in this vortex that told me, you need to restrict your body if you wanna be happy and healthy, Julia. And I was a fitness instructor and there was a lot of pressure that I felt to look a certain way. And I've always been a more athletic build, curvier body, like, you know, thicker thighs, that kind of thing. And I, I just, no matter how much I exercised, I was never gonna look like the people that I worked with. And I felt all this pressure to change my body again. So what did I do? I got stuck in the old patterns. I went back on the restriction wagon, started some intermittent fasting, started over exercising, doing a lot of hip training, not nourishing my body enough, getting stuck in that mentality that, oh, I shouldn't eat this. And if you eat that, don't eat this. And it was this whole give and take attitude, this whole underlying mentality that the, the that less is more, that I should really have to earn my food, that if I was gonna eat that meal at dinner, I better exercise for an extra 20 minutes or maybe a whole even hour. And so what happened? My body went back into that mode of, oh, she's restricting. And even though I would restrict throughout my day, what happened at night? It was like clockwork, like the witching hour. Oh, there's that ding dong and it's time to binge eat. And without even knowing, I would find myself in these patterns of taking a peanut butter jar and eating an entire jar in a matter of a day, or I'd find, you know, it wasn't even that it was unhealthy. The foods that I figured out to eat, you know, I didn't keep those really unhealthy foods in my house, obviously, because I was so conscious of my body, but my goodness, I found creative ways to binge eat. I would concoct these bizarre things where I'd be like, putting banana and oats and like honey and I don't know, chocolate chips. And I'd make something that I thought was healthy, but then I'd end up eating like the whole bowl of it. And I couldn't understand why I was so conscious of what I was doing. But no matter, no matter how many times I told myself I wasn't gonna binge eat, no matter how crappy I felt after I ate, ate the food, no matter how much shame and crying and guilt and, you name it, that I experienced, I could never break free of the binge eating. And before you know it, I don't even know how many things I would have eaten in a given time and like the weirdest, weirdest things. Anything I can get my hands on is just nonstop. And before you know it, you know, an hour would have gone by, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. It just depends on the, depends on the day. And, you know, in the moment, it's almost like, you can't even you don't even think you're just doing it and it's just an automatic thing and you know later you just hate yourself I tried calling a friend before I felt the urge I tried going for a walk I tried taking a breath I tried you know literally you name it i could not stop this pattern that felt so animalistic that i just had to eat and it always seemed to happen at night and so i became so miserable so depressed so full of shame that here i am this fairly intelligent educated woman who knows that you know i shouldn't be binge eating and i told myself every day i wasn't going to do it and i fought the urge and then what happened i was in the pattern again so it led me into such a dark hole where I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to go outside. I didn't want to go to any, you know, social events. My every area of my life was suffering. Every single area of my life. And clearly I it wasn't working. This whole idea of, okay, restrict what you eat, work out as much as you can, try not to binge eat at night and then you'll be happy. It all wasn't working. It was like, sure, you're you're restricting, you know, you're trying to eat healthy throughout the day. 
you're clearly not eating enough so your body is actually propelling you in the direction of trying to nourish yourself through the lens of binge eating and then you're trying to undo the cycle again by over exercising and restricting the next day so you see how we get stuck in this so how I finally overcame this cycle come really close I'm going to tell you this really important information I finally decided number one to stop the cycle of restricting my whole life I've been trying to restrict food because we are taught by the diet industry and just through no fault of our own we are taught that we're supposed to restrict what we eat that we're there's this whole lie that the, the smaller we are, the more worthy we are, that you have to earn your right to eat food and that you should try and keep yourself within a certain amount of calories a day. And my goodness, did I try and follow that? And did it ever work? No. So I finally made the commitment to get off of any type of mentality that involved restricting. I did not touch a diet. I did not weigh myself. I did not do any of the above. What I did was actually practiced letting go and tuning into my body. And this is coming from a person who I, I get it. I know what you're saying out there. Oh, it's um, intuitive eating. Like it's so easy for you, not for me. But the truth is, it's something you learning to trust your body and be in relationship with yourself in that way is one of the keys to success in overcoming binge eating because the more we look outside of ourselves for the answers the more you try to go into these diet traps the more you're going to binge we our bodies are primitively designed to keep us safe so a restriction triggers a signal in our brain that says you're not safe you're not being fed and your body seeks to recorrect that by binge eating so as long as you're going to continue this restriction cycle, you're going to experience binging because that's just how we're designed. And newsflash, this is why diet, the diet industry is worth over $72 billion. Because why? It doesn't work. Less than 2% of the world that ever goes on a diet experiences any lasting results because again, they're designed to fail. They profit off, off of our misery. They profit off of us not being able to be successful. Because if we were successful, nobody would go back on a diet. It would be done, right? And that industry would probably be worth, you know, maybe like five billion. But instead, they keep making money off of sucking you back into this portal saying, Oh, you failed. Your motivation is low. Get back on the diet. And then what happens? For a period of time, you stick to this program to your best abilities. You restrict, you mold yourself into this. And then your body goes... I'm done with that. I'm back to binge eating. I don't feel safe. This isn't working for me. So you got to get off this cycle of restrict, restricting because that directly leads to binging. The other thing is I had so much emotional distress over my body and my insecurity about my body that it ran, I would say, 80 at least percent of my mental energy in a day. So all of these thoughts consuming my mind over how my body looked, how I needed to change it, how, you know, what is this person going to think of me? How could I possibly be, how could I possibly go out? What are they going to think of me? I'm not going to look good in this outfit. I don't want to be in a bathing suit. I can't go on vacation. I can't be seen in public because of this. Just looked in the mirror and like the things I said to myself were just so horrible. <laughs> I would, you know, truly give anything not to go through this anymore, feel it anymore. That mental anxiety completely consumed me and creates stress in your body. This is another piece of useful information that we often don't consider. When you have negative thoughts about your body and you have anxiety about your body and insecurity and it's perpetual and it's going and going and going, that creates a stress response in your body. That stress response and emotional distress is a trigger for binge eating because somewhere in your life you learned again, through no fault of your own, that binging or eating food was a safe way to feel better, okay? And perhaps that was when you were a child, perhaps it was when you were a teenager, it doesn't really matter. We, at some point in our lives, did require this, this act of eating food to feel safe. And then, over time, 
we don't develop other strategies to soothe our emotions. And so our body just learns, okay, well, I'm just going to turn to food again. So we have these two outlets of, you know, either your body's restricting. And so it's trying to counteract that to bring you back to safety by binge eating. Or we have this other aspect of the cycle, which is my body, my mind is an emotional distress. I don't have another strategy that I'm aware of consciously. So my body goes back to the pattern of using food. But then what happens when we eat that food and binge on it? Then we experience more emotional distress, shame, guilt. We go down that spiral and that emotional distress triggers the same cycle to continue again. We try to restrict to counteract what we just did. Then we binge again. Then we feel the shame and guilt. Oh, and round and round we go. So in order to really break this cycle in half, we got to look at both sides of the spectrum. One side is really taking care of your body, choosing to walk away from restricting, choosing to practice a, a relationship with your body where you eat regular meals, you tune into what you feel hungry for, you try to abandon to your best abilities any kind of crap that you've been taught by the diet industry, which we know is not accurate. And you practice really listening to your hunger signals, your full signals, and really practicing that. The irony is so real here. We are taught that the more we restrict, the less we eat, the more we exercise, the better the results. And, you know, the more weight you're going to lose. That is su like, it's such a lie. As soon as I abandoned those principles and practiced intuitive eating and actually nourishing my body wholly, eating full big healthy meals and I abandoned all restriction I my body naturally released 15 pounds and I didn't even step on a scale I didn't measure my body in any way I just said I'm going to focus on practicing intuitive eating no restriction and I want to be clear I I do not restrict I there's no food group I don't eat except for a death deathly allergy that I have to fish but like I'm eating pizza when I feel like it, not five, six nights a week, but I'm eating pizza. I eat tacos. I drink. I have. And when I say drink, when I feel like it, if I want five margaritas, I'm having the margaritas. Like I, I do not practice any type of restriction because it's led me down such an unfavorable and dark path. And the result is my body's never felt stronger. I've never, you know, I haven't been in this shape in my life because I don't agonize over all those thoughts anymore and I don't let the mentality of restriction consume my life. All that mental anxiety is stress on your body and stress increases our stress hormones. It wreaks havoc on our metabolism. Like there's nothing productive about restriction. Whoever tells you that you need to restrict to love your body or, or lose weight is that is total crap and you need to get off of that cycle. I cannot, I, I cannot like wanna shout that from the rooftops. And I am someone who is not a proponent, proponent of believing that you have to lose weight in order to be confident and happy in your body. This whole experiment of mine of going off of the restriction and getting away from diets had nothing to do with weight. It was because I was so over how much mental energy it took up in my day. And I wanted to be able to wake up in the day, trust my body, listen to what I wanted to eat, exercise how I felt called to do, and really develop that trusting relationship with myself. And I've never felt more free and happy and confident. And I know that you are the type of person out there who wants to be able to go on a vacation and, you know, be in a bathing suit, be intimate with your partner, like go to work and feel confident, wear the clothes that you want to wear and not feel overcome with this chatter about your body or what you should or shouldn't be eating. And it is so possible to feel that way. You have to start with getting off of the cycle of this conditioning and the crap that we've been taught. <sighs> Okay, that's my rant. So that's half of the cycle. Part two is really supporting yourself with your mental, emotional well-being and your stress. So one of the things that I learned is that we have to regulate that whole side of the cycle. So how do you take care of all the stress that's coming up about your body? How do you take care of the emotions that are coming up that are leading you to binge eating? Binge eating also happens because we have unmet needs that we're fulfilling with food. So bringing in awareness of 
as you notice yourself binge eating, like start bringing awareness to your body before you do it. What am I feeling right now that my body is uncomfortable with? What am I trying to numb out with food? And the more insight you can get about the root cause behind the binge eating, that's when you can actually do the healing that starts well before you binge eat. We are taught this lie that if you just fight the urge to binge eat, you can overcome it. This isn't about like a grin and bear it and just, you know, clamp down and breathe through the urge to binge like it's a contraction for having a baby and you'll you'll finally be free like this isn't about an urge or or your your willpower this is about actually listening to your body and understanding what is going on that my body is feeling this trigger to binge eat and for me and for most of us there's a lot there to process and so how are you safely creating outlets for your body to heal mentally, emotionally? How are you meeting those needs? You know, working with a practitioner is really important. It's difficult to do this work alone. And so while you can, there is so much healing that can be done on our own, I believe so fully that you should really work with someone that you feel called to do this work with, especially someone that has a lens with mindfulness, because we want to understand how to create and experience tools that can really support us to bring healing to our nervous system. So decreasing that stress, helping you manage your emotions in a way that feels safe so that you don't have to use food as a tool. And a lot of this is below our our conscious level. Um, And that's why it feels so hard to overcome. So this leads me to tapping EFT. When I found EFT work, I was desperate. I didn't know how to overcome this issue with binge eating. I tried every practitioner under the sun. I was like, I'm at a loss. And honestly, like, it got to the point where I was so depressed that I nearly took my own life. And finding EFT tapping, so it stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques, allowed me to actually process all those negative thoughts that were going on about my body, about food, the anxieties, the paralyzing anxieties that were going on, the shame about the binge eating cycle. And using this technique and working with a practitioner, so what you do is you're actually tapping on parts of your body while repeating and talking through the distressing thoughts about this whole cycle, what the cool, the most fascinating and amazing thing is that by doing this, you're you're actually taking the intensity of those thoughts and really decreasing the intensity of those t- thoughts to the point where your brain no longer feels triggered by them. So what happens is we're actually counter conditioning the mind So that the things that once triggered us and led us to binge eating in your brain, in terms of your actual, like how the neurons fire, it just goes like this, we remove the emotional intensity. And so if there's no more trigger anymore, then we don't actually follow through with that pattern of trigger response binge. We've, We've actually come to the root cause and we've eliminated it. So your body no longer feels the urge to binge. So I've never experienced so much healing and transformation and empowerment from learning a tool that I can use myself to actually work through all the layers and things that were causing me to binge eat. And this is what I urge you to do is honestly, I I cannot tell you how much t- tapping transformed my life so much so that this became my life mission and my path to share with other people. And so if you're curious about it, I would really, really recommend that you go. There's a lot of practitioners out there. If you're feeling called to learn more from me and my whole channel, I teach you tools, hands-on tools, the same ones that I use to overcome my struggles. And as soon as I started tapping and using this tool regularly and working with a practitioner, I overcame this pattern that I've had my entire life. And it was gone like this. And I've never gone back. My body has never felt an urge to go back because I've counter conditioned my mind and healed those patterns at a root level. So it is so incredible. I can't, I get so passionate and fired up about it, but the answer doesn't lie in more restriction and uh, following what the diet industry is telling you. It's not going to happen from more exercise. The cure to binge eating is going to come from caring from your body with compassion and kindness, healing those emotional root causes that are leading you to binge. Yeah, and getting off the restriction cycle and leaning on support and having someone hold you through this journey. The other things I want to say is that as you're healing, remember that we're human. So it is very likely and predictable that this tool that you've used for many years is going to happen again. You're going to keep binging, but it's going to go like this. If you started doing it seven days a week, you're going to come, you're going to taper that back and your body's going to start using it less and less to the point where maybe a binge happens once a month. 
and then once every six months and then once a year and then pretty soon you're gonna feel like oh my goodness I've got my life back like I'm no longer imprisoned by this pattern I'm actually free to live my life and I didn't even know this was possible and I know that's what you want so I want you to feel empowered I want you to feel like you have overcome this cycle and said you know a nice cool see you later to the diet industry and prove that you can have the relationship you want with your body without restricting, without any of that mentality that keeps us stuck and sick, because that is the truth. It's only gonna keep you stuck and sick. So if you wanna learn more about how specifically I overcame this and how I can support you to do exactly the same thing, you can book a complimentary call anytime. I offer free 60 minute calls. You can head over to my YouTube channel for the rest of my videos where I'm actually doing the hands-on tapping technique with you and leading you through examples of it. And I, you know, I'm here for you. I know this is really tough, but you're going to get through this. I'm a living, breathing example of someone who has a whole career helping people through this after overcoming my own struggles. And this has nothing to do with food or exercise. So hopefully that's empowering for you. I'll leave that all with you now and uh, you can do this. So <sighs> love you so much. Thank you for being here and choosing this opportunity. And if you wanna give uh, a hands-on tool a try one of my tapping videos you can try this one here and i can't wait to hear from you soon 